All right, call Halayim Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shah by Hashem Rakakodas. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule all over the flock of Israel. Shalom and salutations to you, Akim Alhibris, the words of truth and sincerity. Shalom to all the elect Akim, Akwa, scattered Israelites and Israelite foreigners. Lova in this video will be edifying. And this is Philippians 4 and 5. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. So, what, you, what we know from these two is that we're supposed to be doing some moderating. All right, of our own selves, and the emphasis is that because the Lord is at hand, right? It's not just we decided to be great individuals for the, you know, sake of humanity. No, the Lord is at hand. You gotta get right before the Lord is at hand. When you go into moderation, you have here gentleness. Now, not in the form of like you thinking, uh, 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 you know, being soft, right? Gentleness in the scriptures is a little different than what you what you call being like a gentleman in today's society. It goes into reasonableness, graciousness, right? Gentle spirit. And again, gentle spirit don't mean what you think it mean, like a pushover, somebody who just, you know, you could say what you want to say to. You don't stand up for yourself. You don't got no backbone. Ain't got nothing to do with that. Considerate spirit, um, forbearance, right? And I'm getting some of these words. Forbearance meaning patient, self-control, restraint, and tolerance. Heavy on that word, restraint. All right? Because we know that a lot of uh, certain things that happens, um, uh, we, we, we learn in the society um, or from mothers or from emotional ways of life, with being raised without a dad or whatnot. Um, you raise you you learn to be um, emotional reaction based all right as 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 opposed to pro action you take um pro action meaning you you don't allow somebody all right to to decide uh your action for you that'd be reactionary pro action means before it actually occurs or actually happen you know if you are in this situation what you're going to do and the emphasis is on when the time comes do it right that's moderation when the time comes make the right decisions it says here nlt let everyone see that you are considerate in all you do and being that we in the you know a time where you got mass shootings all right zero days since the last american mass shooting another another day in the park you know you get your weather you get your mass shooting you go out the door because this is the type of energy that America has been having for a while. Now, you hear about the mass shooter, right? He wasn't on no uh, quote-unquote watch list. They wasn't watching for him. But he was a, he was a trained uh, gun trainer. That's what we know about him. And uh, he used to be in the National Guard, I believe. He threatened to shoot up the National Guard. It's all type of stuff coming out on him. But they didn't watch him. They was not concerned with him. He wasn't on no list. Right. So he goes up and he and he wets up about 40 something, something people gets himself a kill strike like he playing Call of Duty. It's a rap for the society. Now, the guy said he heard voices in his head and we believe that because the spirits, the scriptures say we wrestle not against flesh and blood. And but we in uh, places of darkness, a high, high places of darkness and and, and, and wickedness and high places and evils and principalities and things you can't really express with, with words because it's spirits, it's energies out here and they jumping on people and jumping off. It's like the movie Fallen. And so, yeah, he got that he got that message from that angel to go and do what he's supposed to do. And he took care of business, you know, from the from the viewpoint of the Heavenly Father. He took care of business. The angel took care of business, put, put worked on his mind to get him to do something, some carnage. And that's what the angels of the Heavenly Father been doing since the time of the ancient world. It tells you that they wrestled with uh, I forget what king that was, but. He was a king that they wrestled on the mind of this king to make him make a decision. They're going to wrestle on the minds of these kings now to make them press the button for nuclear carnage. So it's not over. We just getting started. But what are we supposed to be doing? We're supposed to be moderating ourselves. Let it be known to all men. So it's not like you just practicing it and, you know, you just you just doing it, you know, you know, to yourself. And I keep to myself what I'm doing. Not like your moderation should be seen. It should be known unto all men. They should be able to see that you consider you're considerate and all that you do, that your restraint is 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 there is intact. All right. Your moderation is there is intact. I'm going to go on. All right. 
because it says the Lord is a hand. And that's our idea and understanding that the Lord is always a hand at what we about to do. So a few scriptures on moderation. All right. Matthew 6 and 25. I proofread some of these. Therefore, I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body. What you shall put on is not the life more than meat in the body than raiment. That's moderation because you can be all tripped up and worry. Sometimes, you know, that spirit of worry and that spirit of fear just it comes in. That spirit of anxiety just come in and you don't even want it to be there. And sometimes you just got to at that moment when you feel it like, damn, I'm just it needs to be an indicator uh, amongst your mind, you know, amongst your body, whether your body, your heart starts to your adrenaline start to go up. Whatever it is, is indicating that you you in a stressful situation. You need to just relax and calm down. You let your moderation because what you could do is start circling the drain yourself. Right. When these demonic thoughts or energy and come overwhelm you or push you down and, you know, suck you big demons and incubus demons out here. When these demons start to mess with your mind or whatnot and plague you that's when you gotta really come into um that moderation you gotta come into that restraint you gotta let yourself know all right this ain't no time to uh lose lose track of you know what i mean you know lose my mind this ain't the time you know if i keep going with this thought i'm gonna i'm gonna you know circle the drain i'm gonna start going a little nutty you know but that's not moderation that's not restraint and going into these scriptures, you know, things that you worry about, always worrying about things. These are stuff that can help you start your mind to start going down a a, a path of anxiety too. Always worried about what you're going to do, who you're going, where you're going, how far you're going, how much it's going, where your bill stacking up. Is this place is allowed to cause anxiety? That's why when these spirits come out to try to plague you. You know, some of your some of your mind is like, well, go for it. Fuck it. You ain't got nothing to lose. You know, this shit is already bullshit It's backwards. But that's not the moderation that the Lord wants you to have. So anything really that seems to be um, a, a point of um, pressure or a point of pain for you, you just got to learn how to, um, you know, be ready and consider that moment's going to come. I need to be ready and I need to choose the more wiser. All right. The more gentle, the more um, restraint. Um, um, I need to choose that action instead of the one that's reactionary, emotional and, and just goes along with that evil thought. All right. It goes on to say and get a few more moderation because the Lord is coming. And that's why we behave and act in this, this way. That's why we're doing these things. All right. This is Luke 21 and 34. It says, and take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting, that's our partying, and drunkenness and cares of this life, so that that day come upon you unaware. So the idea is to clear your mind of all of that noise so that you can focus on the things that's more important, like the day the Lord is at hand. Think about it. You go throughout your whole day. And every once in a while, right, scriptures pop in your mind because you got to be at work. You got to be present with other things. And it's not always constantly 24 seven that a scripture is heavy on your mind and heavy on your conscience. But you're present. You're aware that you in the day of the Lord still. Well, some things can enter into your mind where they really take up too much space or they cloud that judgment. They cloud that awareness that you have right now. When you watch these videos, when you stay active in the scriptures, when you stay active in the push the word, that that mental clarity, that sober mindedness, that wholesomeness that you have, all of these outside activities, the cares of this life, the drunkenness and surfing, and try to seep in and really just push that out your mind again so that you become unawares. That's why the scripture tell you, let your eye be single. You're supposed to be really focused on one thing at a time. Your, your mind is not really trained or it's not. It doesn't have the efficiency to be focused on thousands of things at one time. It don't work like that. That's why you forget things in the first place. So you got to constantly remind yourself and dig deeper into the scriptures. Right. <clears throat> Let's see here. 
1 Corinthians 7 and 29. This is all dealing with moderation, restraint, um, um, your consideration amongst men that you show amongst men. Men should be able to see this. Yeah, now nah, he, he, he think twice before he, no, 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 this dude don't react like he used to or, you know, so forth and so on. 1 Corinthians 7 and 29 says, but this I say, brethren, the time is short. See, everything revolves, it's centered around this idea that we have a short period of time here. You see, there's a complete difference and studies have shown that people with in their elderly ages, 80 and up, have a whole nother system. All right. They look for friendship way more than somebody in their 20s and in their uh, teenage years because the teenager projects his in his mind that he has a long time to get it right. The, the, the elderly person, man or woman, projects in their mind that they have a short time. Therefore, the things become certain importance to them that never really was important before. It all has, it's called the perception of time. You can look these studies up. So it says, but, sis, but this I say, brethren, the time is short. So remember, it's a very biblical, very, very spiritual, very awakened, very um, scriptural, very um, wise mentality to maintain the idea that your time is short. People be talking about 401ks at work. They be talking about vacations. They be talking about 2025 or 10 year plans. That whole idea doesn't function with this truth because the Lord is coming soon, not he ain't going to take a long time. He says, I'll tarry not. I come quickly. I'm going to go on. It says, the time is short. It remaineth that both they that have wives be as though they had none. And it seems like Paul getting all into your personal life and your personal space. But that's really what the thing that clouds you the most is. It be your personal stuff that you got going on. It's your personal reasons why you ain't doing shows every day. It's your personal reasons why you ain't um, come to camp or you miss camp last Saturday. It's your personal space that you ain't moderating right. When you come to when you showing up to camp Saturday afternoon. After Saturday after Saturday for years, that shows moderation in the sight of men. How do we notice? Because people used to come up to us uh, back back in the NYC camp in, in the dead of the winter. They come up to us and they say, look, I don't know what y'all doing, but for, for the for the life of me, they ain't know whatever y'all believe in. It must be y'all really believe in it y'all because the consistency in the midst of this weather. I've never seen it happen before like that. All right. When it came time to take the to when the jizzab came out and you had all brothers losing jobs, had to reposition, you know, move myself just to make things a little more, you know, a little more practical. Well, you know, they saw the moderation that we had in the sight of all men. But it goes deep. It's, it's, it's in the everything that you do. Every choice that you make needs to be done with moderation. I Meaning you need to think it through, consider it, and think about it ahead of times. Meditate on what the possibilities of what could happen. Like when we talk about the MOTB, it's going to happen. They will implement this. You know, so we meditate on that time. How is it going to happen? What's that moment going to feel like? All right. And we pray that the Lord keep us in that day from the hour of temptation let's go on both they that had wives be as though they had none why because the time is short you know when you got a woman you get caught up into that love affair man you know you get all entwined and entangled in that love that's why they sent men home uh, and didn't send them out to war if they just got married because you think about your love your sweetheart in the midst of the battle it says and they that weep as though they wept not and they that rejoice as though they rejoice not whether you sad angry anxiety uh special ed or half retarded um simple minded you need to be as though you're not be as though you're not don't be all uh, uh emotional carry with your emotion and that's what that's going to you weeping you happy you happy you weeping you up you down you down and up you bipolar tripolar adhd dd adhd -D -D. so everything you're supposed to just really check yourself and moderate yourself so that you're doing you're walking right in the sight of men it says as though they rejoice not and they that buy as those they possess not because your purchases you know strike emotion it says and they that use this world as not abusing it for the fashion of this world pass away and i'm gonna for the sake of time i'm gonna skip down and go down to what's talking about the lord coming 
is the idea around why we not caring about our possessions, why we not really uh, elevating our wife and our family positions. And, you know, you have Jake out here who who they are family man. They 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 sit down and look you straight in the eye and tell you when I had my son came into my life, that's when I changed. You see, they they developed a family man approach to living life and as well as that works for them it might benefit them in their everyday life what they're not uh considering is the long term they're not considering the long term is really the short term see the long game is the short game here when you look at life as though this society ain't gonna continue on for a long time like this so i might as well not get too comfortable here then you're really playing the long game because now when the Lord returns, you'll be saw as a good servant, as a faithful servant. And then you'll get to partake in the pleasures forevermore along with the rest of the joint heirs, the part of the elect. This is what we desire. This is the long game. It says, but and if that evil servant, Salaki, where am I? Uh, but if Matthew 24 and 48, but in if that evil servant shall say in his heart, my Lord delayeth his coming. So that's the evil one. He thinks the Lord's going to tarry, take long delay, right? Delay means to, you know, slow it down, right? Take your time with it. It says, and shall begin to smite his fellow servants and eat and to eat and drink with the drunken meaning he go right back into society into the overcharge he's overcharged with the surfeiting and the drunkenness right and the exploits of 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 american life or whatever society he's in he's overcharged with what's going on in the cares of his life in everyday society and he's smiting his fellow servants meaning he's he he's causing he's putting stumbling blocks in front of them yo we need to you know chill on that you know you're always bringing out you know relax you ain't got to do this you ain't got to you know whatever too much studying weariness of the you know he basically trying to get you on his time where you can get more drunk and, and and acting like you got plenty of time the lord delaying we got time we could just chill imagine that if you had to work for eight hours at the beginning of your shift you're like huh but if you got three more hours left to do all the work man you scrambling you scrambling that's what we doing we scrambling um, because we know that the Lord ain't delaying his coming. All right. But the point was that, um, some guys see it as that they got the whole time left. They got more time than they actually have. And that's deceiving your own selves. The Lord said that will happen. The Lord of that servant shall come in a day when he looketh not for him and in an hour that he is not aware of. All right. And that's why all these T attacks be happening. That's why people get hit up. They're not considering that, yo, all that has to happen is a spirit, a demon, demonic spirit can jump on a, a, this is a trained, um, a, a, a gun trainer. This ain't no average. This, this is a gun trainer. I believe he got military background, right? And them demons was messing with them, but they over there watch, they too busy watching us. They too busy starting wars. They too busy doing every other thing. So the Lord is starting to plague America. He been doing this, but he continues to plague America with this demonic energy. And there ain't nothing but guns out here. There ain't nothing but gun owning Edomites out here. Cause that's who did it. Edomites. But the first thing they're going to say is, well, he was suffering from mental illness. Well, he still got to be put away and done away with. He still committed a murder. He still gets judged by it. He still gets put to death. He still was a damn devil. All right. <laughs> That's why I jumped up on him. Just like the rest of them devils, like Christopher Columbus, like like the devils that they celebrate so often. Leopold and, 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 and all of these rest of these devils. George Washington. All right. All of them was devils, man. They all had demonic spirits on them. They all killed with, without any hesitation. All right. The thief cometh, but not for to steal, to kill and to destroy. That's all. That's their M.O. That's how they operate. All right. Now, let's see. First Thessalonians five and two for yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief. So we wrapping our minds around the day of the Lord as if it's a close closer than we could see. You know, in the mirror on the side mirror says, be careful. Objects in this mirror may be closer than they appear and that's the delusion is that you think you got as farther away but it's really right right around the corner so we not we know perfectly 
that that scenario that even though it seems like it's far and the world going to treat it like it's far. Matter of fact, the world's going to keep you unaware of how close it is. They going we supposed to treat it like it's near. It says, but when they shall say peace and safety. And that's what the vibration has been in America since we existed. Peace and safety. All right. Then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travailed upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day shall overtake you as a thief. <clears throat> Second Thessalonians 2 and 2. That ye be not soon shaken in mind, right? Because your mind can shake, right? Your mind is supposed to be stable like a four-legged chair, like a four-legged desk, like a, like a good foundation, a house built upon a rock. It's supposed to be stable. And it's emphasized that you stable your mind with the words of this of the scriptures known as sound wisdom, sound judgment, sound doctrine, doctrine that heals you, doctrine that makes you fit and whole and complete. You can't be complete if you got three legs on a chair. That's not good enough. Two legs ain't good enough. Anything less than all four ain't good. So you need it to encompass all of the scripture to in order that your mind be secured. It's for the sake of your mind. While you go, while we deal with Deuteronomy 20, you know, 28, or we go into the Old Testament, then we go to the New, then we go back into the, it's for the sake of our mind while we deal with the, the, the history of the Gentile nations ruling over us. It's for the sake of our mind and the stability of, of, of our minds so that when uh, a new philosophy or a new doctrine or a new understanding kind of creeps in, you can filter it, right? It says, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, as that the day of Yahweh shot is at hand. So Paul wanted all his men to know it doesn't matter what happens. Whatever you do, hold strong to this one understanding. It says here in the, uh, let's see, NIV, not to become easily unsettled or alarmed by the teaching allegedly from us, whether by a prophecy or by word of mouth or by letter, asserting that the day of the Lord has already come. How about that? Because you had prophes prophecies back then, false prophets back then, saying that the Lord already came. The Lord already came. He's this man or he's that man. We're looking for that day. All right. So it's emphasized. Keep looking out for that day let's see what the nlt say and then i'm gonna close it don't be so easily shaken or alarmed by those who say that the day of the lord has already begun don't believe them some say the new covenant is already here we already in the new covenant all right but yahweh shah is going to bring forth that new covenant and change our bodies and change our minds with the new, these new bodies so don't believe them even if they claim to have had spiritual vision a revelation or a letter supposedly from us. So Paul didn't want you to be confused that the day of the Lord had already came because the emphasis is on is on being aware for the day, watching for the day, praying for the day, hastening the day, being moderate, being moderate in the sight of all men, not because you like the admiration of men, but because the day is coming. The day steadily approaches and those that can see you on guard they get on guard you know jake is shepherds sheep right and so sheep mimic and follow each other right they'll follow each other to the slaughter right or they'll follow each other to green pastures and if you're leading as a shepherd as a good shepherd of the lord right following how a shah the great shepherd if you're leading men and other sheep and of the flock to the green pastures and you get a, a, a reward of a of a of a you know of, a, of an elect, you get the reward that comes along with um, um, their benefit, you benefiting them, you know, on behalf of you taking care of the Lord's sheep, you get a reward for that. But if you lead them into, um, uh, you know, that, and I'm just following this idea that, you know, you're an example, you, you, whether you like it or not, um, sheep are going to follow you if you uh, profess wisdom, whatever you profess in this world. They're going to follow you, you know. So with that, Lord willing, this video is edifying. Um, I'm going to give all praise and glory and honor to you. How about Shemiah Shah? All right. How about Kakwadash? Till next time. Shalom.